Hi, my name is Robert Overholzer, and today we're doing another video in our 991 GT3 video series, cooperating with Idea Television. Today with me is Nando Silva Pinto. One of the uh, points of contention of the new GT3 is the fact that this is a car that doesn't have a manual transmission. Now, Robert, is the PDK of the GT3 going to be everything that has been promised? Uh, the shifting in milliseconds, the uh, adaptation to the rotations of the engine and all that. What do you think? I think for most people, if they haven't experienced it, it's just hearsay. You know, I mean, everybody's speaking on a historical context of, hey, I know what a manual car feels like. That's what I want. I like that. So then as soon as they're being told they get an automatic transmission, they're like, no, that's not what I want. The first time you drive that car, you're going to have all of those worries go away. And for myself, as a purist, that was the first impression I had. One of the uh, constant preoccupations that I had at the track with the RS was evidently, like everybody else, misshifting and over revving the engine, destroying the engine in, in one second. So much so that here at Luft Technique, we installed not a sequential gearbox, but a sequential shifter, which actually demands more time but prevents you from destroying your engine. Is the 991 GT3 going to be as capable at the track as this car was? I think with all of the technology that that car has at its disposal that it's hard to argue that point. You're still connected to everything that needs to be going on because there's a lot of technology that the driver has to be aware of and at the same time the car has got at its disposal all of that technology to aid you in doing what you would like to do which is go faster in a more controlled and safe environment. There is nothing more bare bones than a race car from, from Bison. And there is probably very few things more complex than a modern Porsche, street Porsche. How user-friendly is it going to be for the owner of the GT3 to enjoy the car in the street, enjoy the car in the street, and then come to a specialist and say, um, take care of my car? Well, one thing that we don't have is all of the engineering disposal that Porsche does. And I talk to our customers every day about some of those things when they want to experience the next level of this or that, or should I change this or that? And I'm like, look, you know, they've spent millions and hundreds, if not thousands, of hours developing a car to the best of their ability. There's obviously some things that could be done from a more race track safety environment, i.e., harnesses and helmet and some of those kinds of protective gear. But outside of that, I mean, it, it could be the proof is in the pudding. Do you think that Jiu Jitsu Tree is going to be as, as capable? the track is discovered. You know, we look at this car and now it's over a decade old. So in that amount of time, there's been a tremendous amount of technological advancement, um, which gets to be quantum leaps. You know, the scale is becoming something of a geometric curve on what cars are capable of these days. And this new GT3 is probably going to be looked upon as one of those big stepping stones. Every part of that car is governed by a computer and managed, and it's also done in such a kind of a team effort that the brakes rely on the motor, and the motor relies on the brakes, and this, that, and the other. Um, so I think going forward, there's gonna be even more of a stress into the IT-like environment, more of an electrical engineering versus a mechanical type of thing, and that's for street cars and race cars. I think it's an automotive, global scale kind of challenge. One of the very first things we used to do at track is this, is to put a, a, a racing seat in the car, to, to, to not having to worry about the G-forces banging you in the way playing that. We cannot do that immediately with that car, unless there is a seat from the factory. So I cannot put a Recaro seat on that car. And those are the challenges with the modern technology is changing to a non-airbag steering wheel or changing to a steering wheel that has a different shape or contour, changing to a race seat. All of those have consequences in a new automobile because they're coupled with all of the safety systems and potentially even some of the stability control. So having some of that stuff at our disposal, those items are still there, but that as one of the challenges moving forward is going to be something that we're going to have to focus on. Every consumer, every user these days is plugged into a phone, into a computer, into a tablet. They're getting instant information, and the automobile of 2014 and beyond is very similar. 
You know, it has its analog controls, it's got its digital controls. You've got a digital clock, an analog clock, and, and a timer. You know, you're seeing all of that at the same time on top of all of the other things that are there. So in, in some cases, from my perspective, it's almost too much information. So that becomes one of those challenges that you have to then manage that environment. I think it'll be an exciting, fun adventure.